Alright, what is up everybody? Welcome back to yet another video in the Unreal Engine 5 multiplayer game tutorial series we're currently making. We're all doing alright. Uh, this will be a boring video, probably a long one as well. We'll see. We're gonna refactor some stuff. Uh, also, I messed up a bit. I changed the uh, names of some C++ classes which made the player characters and stuff like that remove their parents so there's kind of some reworking that has to be made but it doesn't really matter because I was planning to remake a lot of that stuff as well because we have the ba basic design functionality down for the uh, for the combat system so I kind of want to move some of the stuff into components anyway so that it's easier for you guys to implement it into your own project if you already have a lot of stuff in there. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do here now. Uh, and luckily this time I actually backed up my project. So it's not going to be like one of those old, I did a shooter series that I lost all my project. I lost lost a lot of old tutorials. Uh, so yeah, let's just get started. Uh, so I'm just going to copy functionality from the old project. You likely have that already, so you will just have to make new classes. Uh, but let's start from the beginning. Uh, I already deleted my game mode and made a new one. That's fine. That's just you can just use the old one. We see we have default pawn class here. So if I play now, I have nothing. So um, we are going to. One second. Let me just check the audio. Yeah, looks like it was fine. So let's start with the player character. Um, you have. The player character here. Actually, I already I noticed it when I did this one, because you see the parent class of this one is now none, and I have no functionality. Doesn't matter because we're gonna refactor it anyway. So uh, if I open this one, I will get an error saying that's not gonna work. So I am going to rename this one to old. And I am going to rename this one to old. Whoops, crash. Okay. All right, I'm back. Looks like it crashed, but doesn't matter. Okay, so I renamed all of my player characters to old. This one also. Old. Good. So now I still have the functionality, I think. Maximize. Yeah, so it still has all the functions and stuff, so that's good. Just in case. So, we're gonna create a new character. Class, character, master, character. No, wait. New blueprint class, all classes. So you can choose character. I'm gonna do my master character. If it's a C++ project that you have, you probably have your base character from your C++ files. This is mine. It doesn't contain any specific functionality. It's fine if you just do character as well. I'm gonna do mine because I might want to add C++ stuff to my character project later. So, BP master character. It's already named, so I need to fix up redirectors. BP master character since we named this one I'm gonna open it up and we're not really gonna do anything specific with that one we're gonna create a shell blueprint class BP master player And I'm gonna create another shell blueprint class called BP Master NPC. Uh, 
and I'm gonna make a folder for the old ones for now. Here. And, and the master player. I'm gonna to the old one. Since I or if I made some errors, so I'm just gonna open master player in my old backup I am gonna here I am gonna copy the spring arm and the camera put it in the master player again so it uses the same settings and yeah so this is only the player NPCs does not need to have camera stuff gonna go to the world settings the master game mode uh, prince game management game mode gm master there and it will be master player so now okay yeah this also has an issue you're not gonna have this issue so it's fine for you Uh, let me also fix this. Go. I actually just deleted. Doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, and we're gonna set the mesh to be. In minus ninety to seventy is the correct. There we go. Just gonna change this to be the window so we can see our character spawned. Now I need to copy the inputs. Here, keep it once again. My headset is dying, so I'm gonna plug that in. And we are back. And we're actually gonna start putting the inputs in our player controller instead. So we're gonna set the player controller class to be PC Master. Changed here. Uh, so in this one, we will get the inputs and inputs. Actually, can I create a new graph called input graph? Take inputs. So we have the move, jump, light attack, look, and evade. Take the look and move, put it there. And did we, I can't remember if we actually did some custom stuff. Uh, but I'm just gonna remake it. So we're gonna do a function get movement input and gonna open it up. We're gonna make a return node and do. Actually, we will do a vector 2D 
call it current input. Plus steam as well. And to a or actually this shouldn't have any I'm sorry just gonna copy from another project so we will get the control rotation from ourselves break the rotator make rotator plug in the yaw from the output we will get the right vector and the forward vector so we need two vector outputs right input forward input oh and now from here to get player pawn Add movement input again. Let's make this a pure function. So the first one is right, second one is forward. So the first one will be x right and y right and on in play At the Let's see where I... is this the deep findings? Zoom to add the deep. Did I do that in project? Just looking. False. Okay, there we are. So this is what we need to add into our play controller. Enhance input local player subsystem. Check if it's valid, and if it's valid, we're gonna add IMC default. So now we can move. Just need to set up the hook function.
I do believe my headset died there. I do not know exactly when it died. Uh, so, or my mic died. So, just having horrible luck lately. So I'm not sure why I recorded now, but that's it. This is gonna be a confusing video. You just have to live with it. It's the reality of being a game dev. Nothing works as you want it to when it should work. So this is what I added in case you didn't know. Yeah, in case my headset didn't record. Add your input, add pitch input. Since we're already in the player controller, we don't need this. We don't need to get the player. So now, if we play... It works fine. That's the basic. We can ignore the jump for now. Uh, this are gonna be set up a component. Perfect. And we have the player details and MPC details. Player details, MPC details. That's perfect. So we're still gonna use this. Uh, Gonna do it slightly different. Uh, no, that's still the same. It's fine. So we can still use all of that in our master player. Let's set up the And there we go, we are now moving again with the animation blueprint. Perfect. So, let's add a new folder called component. And we're gonna make a new class. Oh, not actor. Class, actor component, AC character manager. I'm gonna call this one. And we're gonna make another one. Class, act component, AC, and PC manager. Okay, so we wanna put most of our logics in, in these components. Uh, and I'm gonna try to make that work, so it's gonna be easier for you guys to actually use the components in your projects, and it also will uh, be easier in the future, like to swap characters in case you buy you buy like a pre-made template or something, or animations or whatever. You can just add this component to that. ALS would be an example. Uh, you could just add these components to the ALS characters instead of having to remake the entire character. And the same with, we don't know, the 5.4 animation uh, example is going to come out. And I'm betting a lot of people will use that. So it should be easier to add this to those templates, for instance, uh, as well. So that's one of the reasons I want to do that. So that's for my own case as well. It's going to be easier in the future. If we're actually going to continue with this project, it's better to refactor it now, once it's still in the early stages, than to do it later. So, let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to open the character manager. And we are going to make a function called Server load character. 
can we can actually make it into components but you see this is how our character looks now so let's begin play uh, get owner add component by class it's gonna be static mesh components and of this variable call it weapon mesh and from this one I'm gonna do this again I'm gonna turn this into a function we're just gonna make it so the work cast to character Casting this case is fine because it is a character, so cast this cast is fine because it doesn't really think it's already it's already a character, so character character is already loaded into memory. We're gonna get mesh. So that's this mesh. Get the weapon mesh. Attach components to components. Actually, we're gonna call this main and mesh. So we have a shield as well. Snap to targets, snap to targets, snap to targets, snap to targets, snap to targets. Snap to targets. Gonna do this once more. This will be promote variable offhand mesh. Do a sequence. And we get data table row, and this will be the player details. Get the prototype player and break it. Set main mesh. Oh. Set set static mesh. To the main hand mesh. And we will attach it to the main hand sockets. Let's just see how that looks. Turn a replication. Oh, yeah, we actually need to add the components. And we can see the sword is now attached to our hat. You can just do that for any character now since we're dynamically creating. See, this still has only the default stuff, but we're manually creating it static mesh components needed
and let's see if that that should replicate because it's on begin play. So let's just see. It does yeah? So that replicates. But we don't want to do this on begin play. Uh, or especially for multiplayer games, it's a bit unreliable. We want to use our own initiation. So. We go into did it, did it, did it. change this a little bit. We are going to make a new structure. So here we will make a new structure called EPS Weapon Details. This one will hold Weapon Mesh, which will be a static mesh. Quick reference, we will do socket name uh, a name and we will add a montage array to be weapon attacks We're gonna go into the player details We're gonna delete this 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 and we're gonna add main and mesh and instead this will be of the type weapon details. Main and details. Off hand details. So now here, in here now in this row, you can see we can just grab the D here. So. I create a new graph called equipment graph. Gonna do a custom event server set main hand. Gonna run this on server. Reliable. It's gonna take an input of weapon details. Gonna promote this to a variable, call it current main hand. Gonna do a new custom event and do the same for the off hand. Input. to a variable and that's the current offhand. Now both of these are gonna be rep notifiers. So we're gonna promote this to a variable as well. Call it character details. So we have a holder variable. 
so we don't have to do the lookup every time. It's fine though, but still. Uh, we're also going to make a custom event server set character details. And this is the character de details will probably be used for setting stuff like uh, actual character measures and stuff like that, like hairstyles and everything. Gonna set the character details like so. This will also be a rep notify. This will also be reliable. So now we can do uh, do, 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 do. Just think for a second. So from here, server set character details. Oh, wait. Like so. So that goes in and sets this notifier. I want to collapse this to a function. Set up character components. And then switch has authority. So the components we want to be created on both clients, like on everybody, like on the server and on the clients. So everybody knows about those, these two. So these are now official components of the characters since it's set on begin play. But then if we have authority, we want to call this server event because this is a rep notifier. This only needs to happen on the server and it's going to replicate the changes, right? And after that, we also want to server set main hand and server set off hand. And to do that, we're going to break main hand details, off hand details. Now we can take this into our service at main hand and do this here. I'm gonna cast this to character. And this is the main hand right, so we can just grab our main hand variable. Do the socket name, do the weapon mesh. There we go. And now we need to go into our player details and do the fill this out. Can't remember the socket name. Equip sword shield. Equip sword. And that should be that. Let's see if that worked. Does this not give me errors? I'm actually just going to delete the old stuff for my, you shouldn't do that, you probably don't have those errors. Is this right? Confusing. 
confused. Master player old. You don't need to delete that, it's only me. And that didn't work, so let's find out why that is not working. We have the components. We have the stuff in here, right? Main hand, is it main hand? Let's do a print string here and see if we get anything. Do could it be the this that doesn't exist? Seems to exist. Let me pause and check. All right, I am back. It seems the issue is so it works with this delay. So what happens is begin play triggers on the clients a bit later. So this triggers faster on the server before these are actually created on the clients. So there's nothing to set. If I remove this delay here now, see it works on the server, but it doesn't work on the clients, and we get this issue access none. So the access none is because this is trying to be set on the clients, but it doesn't exist. So, uh, There is, I have plans, I know how to get around this. We're, this is what I mean, why you shouldn't use begin play, uh, because stuff like that happens. We're just gonna use a delay for now. It's a bad solution, that's not gonna be the way we, we're not gonna spawn the characters like this anyway. So we will implement the proper event for this, but for now let's just leave it at that. And we have, if we have a delay there, you can see we are spawning on the clients as well. Uh, so let's just leave that for now. Um, and we want to set up the offhand as well. That's the shield. Assume it was shield underscore equip. It was not. Ah oh, yeah, we need to do this or this one as well. Go into the offhand. In this case, we're gonna get the current offhand instead. And we're gonna get the offhand mesh. Sorry if this is a long video and it's all complicated. Uh, it's needed for this series to last, otherwise we will just have a bunch of issues in the future. And they won't get solved, so. Current of hand. Uh, Equip shield. Equip shield. I had it the other way around. So, there we go. You can see that our character is back to having weapons. 
And it's just a default character. There's just using the component. There's no actual logic for this. It sets up the meshes dynamically and everything. So it should be super easy to implement into other projects. Uh, that's the start. We're going to make another video that's going to be equally as long. And it's we're going to do the same for the MPC. We're going to set up the attacks. But everything is still going to be component based. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Sorry for this. That's just life. That's game dev. So yeah, let's keep going in the next one. I'll pause here for now as to not overwhelm you with time. See ya.